five front doors, living in a home where someone uh, checked out, and it's time to get creepy. What? Get ready to laugh out loud because today we're reacting to some of the most ridiculous housing scenes from Family Guy. That's right, folks. I'm Mark Max, the local real estate expert here in San Diego. All right, bring on the first clip. Five front doors. So the first thing I think when I look at this house is not enough front doors. And before you ask, this is in no way related to any OCD compulsion I have about needing doors to correspond to each weekday. Now, let's go buy some doors and big hammers. Five front doors. You cruise up, you see Peter, he's got the construction crew ready for the five front doors, but there's four of them. So his OCD is obviously not kicking in that hard, except maybe for front doors. So those guys are looking good. They look like the tool belts are ready to roll and they're ready to do some demo. Doing construction, wearing the hard hat. There's a lot of times that you don't necessarily need it, but you always want to try to prevent that accident. Similar to like steel toed boots, shoes, having the tool belt. I used to get yelled at all the time. John Halo, if you're watching, <laughs> he'd be like, where's your tool belt? I'm like, it's over there. He's like, well, I need a tape right now. You're wasting time. That cost me a dollar for you to go get your tool belt. Get your tool belt on. So keep your tool belt on and take all safety measures. Okay, we got our doors and big hammers. Now it's time for my favorite part of every job. The demo. Are you sure Lois <laughs> said this is okay? Yeah, yeah, it's five front doors, Cleveland. That makes sense. All right, start on five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Peter? Five front doors, Lois. Damn it! Did you stop taking your OCD meds? They don't make me feel creative. Five front doors. <laughs> Good old Peter. Five front doors. I have honestly never seen that in a house, and I don't have any idea why you would need five front doors. I can understand if it's a fiveplex and you have an entrance into each particular unit, but there would be absolutely no reason or need for that. Maybe five doors throughout the whole house for gaining access, but never in the front of the house. I have seen times when a person would move their front door to the other side because that particular street is more desirable than the current street that they actually live on. It doesn't necessarily increase the value of the home, but it, it, it draws more buyers to the potential property. Obviously, you can't just grab the sledgehammer like Peter and start wailing away. That's going to require a permit from the city. That takes time. It takes a little bit of money. And you'd have to get a permit for <laughs> each of the demos. So realistically, probably not the wisest adding four more front doors. I'm standing here at the home of the Griffin family chatting with their neighbors. So the Griffins might be dead. How does that make you feel? Griffin dead? I take. <laughs> No, no, they might be dead. They, they also might still be alive. He's okay. I, I take. <laughs> you bet, champ. Hey, by the way, who moved our house? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he said they may be dead inside. Griffin might be dead inside. If someone does pass away in the home, it is a disclosure. You must disclose that on the transfer disclosure statement. I believe it's up to six years, but it's something that you do need to disclose. Let me know in the comments below, would you live in a house that someone passed away in? It's interesting, you know, Consuelo, she, she grabs the house and she pulls it and, and, and moves it. We have seen a couple houses in and around La Jolla that are historic, built in the late 1800s. They cannot bulldoze those, so they literally move them from one lot to another. They get it up on a flatbed. I, I don't know the exact details on it, but I have seen it done, and it's actually pretty darn cool. Obviously, a lot better than bulldozing it, and, you know, with the historic aspect, you know, maintaining the integrity of the house and moving it to a new spot. Time to get creepy. Huh, kid family. <laughs> Come on, Quagmire. What a scumbag. So Brian is the neighborhood watch. You know, I don't know, looky Lou, Peeping Tom. What do you call him? Just a, a crazy dude with a set of binoculars. Come on now. I mean, you know, every once in a while, you're going to take a peek over, keeping up with the Joneses or whatnot. But I, I can honestly say I've never had binoculars that I'm like trying to peep and creep. Hey, let me know in the comments below. You ever had a, a, a neighbor spying on you or you ever kind of taken the binocs or, and taking a look at your neighbors? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, then you got, you know, Quagmire 
hopping in the rope, rappelling down to the lady's house. Her husband just left. The rappelling aspect of Quagmire getting into that house. I remember one time our showing agent, Mike, we were at a beautiful home, 11 and a half million bucks in La Jolla. He walked out to let me in the main gate. All of a sudden the front door slammed and uh, he's like, oh great, the key is on the counter and went to try to open that door, it was locked. So he and I actually had to break into a very large house. Luckily there was a window, but there was a lot of prying and <laughs> we got back in there just in time to get it opened up for the buyers that came by. So yeah, every once in a while we have to do some crazy stuff. Oh. Is that Principal Shepard? Wow, that looks like a rocky relationship. Rocky relationship. <laughs> okay, they're obviously home. You'd have to be dumb to try to rob that place. Oh, yes. <laughs> I hate the guy, but he's good. <laughs> the Leopard Speedo underwear. So the inflatable family, you know, walking around, that reminded me of Home Alone, where he's, you know, got the, to scare off the bad guys. You know, in real estate, we do use staged props. And if you ever go to a house and you find out it's staged, don't try to run and jump on the bed because a lot of times it'll be an air mattress that's on top of like a platform. And we've had a couple different people, kids run and try to jump on it and they've literally just done the tuck and roll. So realtor tip for you, don't jump on beds at staged homes. <laughs> and then you got Quagmire shooting the thing up at the jet, the narrow escape as the husband enters the house. And I luckily haven't heard of anything like this in real estate, although we've dealt with a few sadly divorce situations. We have heard, oh yeah, that son of a gun, he was cheating on me or that son of a, that girl, dang it. So just try to be loyal, that's all I say. I never said the word stole. Looks like someone has a guilty conscience. Guilty conscience, ha! <laughs> I'm the only guy on this block who actually pays for his cable. Ooh. Pretty high and mighty for a man who left our nation's flag out in the rain last 4th of July. That's against the law, officer. Ooh. Yeah, you're one to duck. Out there every trash day picking through my garbage. That's an invasion of my privacy. Ooh. He's sudden you're recycling because he loves our Mother Earth. If you weren't so busy trolling for booty all the damn time, you could do it yourself, like the law says you should. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's so funny when you talk about stealing cable. A lot of us are clipping the cable cord. We did it a couple years ago. You know, you plug in the, the fire stick or whatnot. I remember back in the day that we would run those cables all over the house and splice here and splice there and borrow from the neighbor. But those days are kind of few and far between. But now it's like your Netflix, all of your apps for everything, you name it, they have it. And so it's one of those things you can get a lot more specific, YouTube TVs. The cable days are, are kind of getting further behind us. Do you guys ever share apps and maybe, you know, let family members or friends borrow your, your, your password? <laughs> let me know in the comments below. I remember back in college, we had one neighbor that had cable and we asked them if we could tie into their box. One of my roommates was real handy. So we had this little junction box, plugged theirs in. It had a bunch of outlets. We plugged these black wires that look like extension cord wires and they ran all over, tucked it through a window. And all of a sudden, boom, we got cable. <laughs> so for all you generation that haven't had to deal with cable, that's what it's all about. You obviously have the American flag, supposed to pull that in during the rain. I have one that I keep flying all high and mighty. And if we get rain, I'm pulling that bad boy in. I'm, I'm making sure it doesn't touch the ground. Then you have the other neighbors that leave up their Halloween decorations. I did have a very expensive house that I was selling and they still had their holiday decorations, their lights. They had some Santa stuff up and we politely asked them if they could take those down in July and even offered to have them taken down for them and tucked away. So they never ended up taking it down, but we did sell the house. <laughs> How long do you typically keep up your holiday decorations? After the new year, when do you pull them? Let me know in the comments below. All right, and then you have obviously Quagmire and his, his fun little Hugh Hefner robe, the neighborhood, Playboy. Let me know in the comments below, do you have any quagmires in your neighborhood? All right, be honest. Have you ever had a disagreement with a neighbor? Flags out in the rain, leaving holiday decorations up too long? Let me know in the comments below. 
and what it was about and how you ended up dealing with it. Also, what are the shows you want me to check out and react to next, please? Leave those in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you binge watch the entire playlist right here and subscribe to my channel. That way you're in the know every time I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching.